Hello, this is Eric Martin from the University of Maine's Mechanical Engineering Department. This guide will help us solve moments of inertia for composite areas. In this guide, we'll look at the central location and the moment of inertia for a composite section, and then we'll also have an explanation for section moduli. Let's take a look at a channel with a cross section shown. To determine the bending stresses caused by our bending moment, that we've got here, we need to use what's called the flexure formula. Sigma x is equal to minus my over iz. This flexure formula uses what's called the moment of inertia iz, which is the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis. And then we draw this here. The centroid would be in this location, and we have our centroidal axis z. And we need to determine what our moment of inertia is about this axis z. But in order to do that, we must determine what our location between some reference and our centroid is, and we'll call this Y bar. So many shapes can be divided into simpler segments that are more easily analyzed. If we look at the channel, we can divide our channel into three segments, in this case, three rectangular segments. Each of our segments have a well-defined centroid as well as a shape that we know the moment of inertia. And we'll talk about the moment of inertia of rectangles in the next slide. This method to break a composite area into well-defined segments is valid for any shape just as long as its centroidal axis is known and the uh, moment of inertia of each segment is known. And so if we look at a shape that we've got here, we've got a triangle, we can call this section one, a rectangle, we can call that section two, a circle, section three. So we can easily determine what each centroid location is, as well as we can either look in a table or have memorized our moments of inertia about each segment's centroidal axis. Here's a rectangle. The, um, it's a very common shape that most, um, most cross sections can be divided into several rectangular segments, consider I-beams or T-bars, or just a rectangle itself. And the moment of inertia of a rectangle is I-bar is equal to BH cubed over 12. And here I-bar is just another way to write um, I with a bar on top. And so this, um, we need to realize that our moment of inertia about the centroidal axis is this z-axis, and b is parallel to our z-axis. In statics, we learned how to determine the centroid and moment of inertia of composite areas, and what we will do next is quickly review how to do these calculations and then do an example. Looking again at our channel, we have our centroid equation as shown where we have Y bar, also known as Y with a bar on top, is the uh, location of our centroid of our entire composite area. And again, so we have Y bar, and it's at some location here. And uh, we find this by summing the centroid of each segment, the product of the centroid of each segment by each segment's area, YIA, and so this would be y2, this would be y3, and then this distance up here would be y, looks like y1. Some books may call them y tildes, by the way, and call the centroid of our entire section as y bar. And then we have the area of each segment. And so here we have um, each area that we'd have to calculate. The nice thing about rectangles is that our rectangles are easy to calculate both the location of the centroid as well as the area of each uh, segment. To determine the moment of inertia for each composite area, we use the equation that we see here. Here we have IZ, which is our moment of inertia, and that's about the entire um, that's the moment of inertia of our entire section about the centroidal axis. We typically call this our z-axis in beams anyway. And here's y-bar. So iz is the moment of inertia about this z-axis. 
I bar is the moment of inertia of each segment's centroidal axis. So here we would have segment three, and so we have I bar would be about this segment's axis. And then we have it multiplied by the area of each segment, or, or I'm sorry, added by the area of each segment, multiplied by uh, the distance between the two centroids squared and so it's the area that we've got here this area in this case would be area 3 multiplied by the square of this distance between one centroid and our centroid of our entire section for an example problem we're going to look at this t-beam and we are going to find the location of its centroid as well as determine the moment of inertia about its centroidal axis so we will use a table to help calculate our centroid location and our moment of inertia about that centroidal axis. The table is quite handy when you do it on paper, but it's even more handy when you bring it into something like an Excel spreadsheet where it does all the calculations for you. We're going to use this in a way that all of our segments are rectangles, so we're going to be using lots of bases and heights and nice, easy to calculate areas, as well as centroid locations of all of our uh, sections or segments I should say so I'm going to go ahead and basically just fill the the top uh, the top row and then the uh, the leftmost column and so the first one is what we're going to call our segment and that's basically what we're going to do is we're going to divide our section into two segments we have a segment one here and then a segment two at the top we have segment we have our base, that's going to be in inches, that's going to be the base of each of these rectangles. And then we're going to have the height, that will be in inches. That will be the height of all our rectangles. Then we're going to have the area, which will be in inches squared. And that will just be our base times our height. Then we are going to have what's called Y, and that will be the distance between each segment's centroid to, we'll call this Y1, we'll call this Y2, to a reference. Again, typically it's good to have our reference at the bottom or at the top, and that would be Y. The next column will be YA, and that will be in inches cubed, and that will be the product between this column and this column and um, when we're done that we'll have all the information we need to fill out our and, de and to determine our centroid location. The next column will be the moment of inertia about each segment's centroid which will be bh cubed over 12 and that will be in inches to the fourth power. Then we're going to have a distance D, and what this distance will be is that we're going to end up having a centroid location. We'll call this our z-axis, and we'll call this y-bar, and that will be the distance between our segments. So we'll have this to be D2, I'm sorry, that will be D1, and this distance will be D2. And then the next column will be d squared a, which is, we get that from again from our parallel axis theorem, which will be our area that we've got here, times this dimension squared. That will give us inches to the fourth power. And then our last column is going to be iz is equal to i bar plus a d squared. I think if you look at your previous slide, it'll say dy squared, so we'll call it dy. So we can see that we have cleaned up our table a little bit. And what we're going to do is divide our section into our two segments again. Here's segment one, 
here's segment two. I'll write our segments here, segment one, segment two. We'll call this uh, the sum. And for our first segment, segment one, we have a distance of B of 1.5. Put 1.5 here. Segment two, we have a distance of B of 10 inches. We'll put 10 inches here. We actually won't be doing the sum on any of these until we get to the area and until we get to YA. So I'll just put some dashes there. Now we have a height of segment one. So segment one has a height of 12. And segment two has a height of one. And then we multiply um, our base times our height to determine our areas. And so 1.5 times 12 is 18. That's 18 inches squared. And then 10 times one is one inch. I'm sorry, 10 times one is 10 inches squared. And the sum of those two areas would be 28 inches squared. Now we go look at our y's. And once again, our y distance is the distance between each of our segments centroid to a reference axis. So in this case, we have a y for segment one of six inches. And for segment two, we'll have a y of 12 plus uh, one half would be 12.5. So segment one would have a Y of six inches. Segment two would be 12.5. And then we're gonna multiply 18 times six. That'll give us Y times A. And so 18 times six is 108. And then 10 times 12.5 would be 125. And now we're gonna add these together. So we're gonna have a sum of these two YAs of uh, 233 inches squared. I'm sorry, inches cubed. That should be inches cubed there. Now you may ask, what is so important about these values right here? Well, recall our equation that we used earlier where we had Y bar was equal to the sum of YI AI divided by the sum of our AIs. So our sum of our yi ai's is our 233, 233 inches cubed divided by our sum of our a's is our total area, 28 inches squared. And we should be getting a value of 8.32 inches. That is our centroid location of our entire cross section. So 8.32. And so I will clean this information up and we'll look to find our moment of inertia next. So we're going to look at our next column, which is I bar, and we're going to calculate the moment of inertia of each segment about its own centroidal axis. Recall for a rectangle that the moment of inertia about its um, own centroidal axis is equal to bh cubed over 12. And we're just going to use the same bh's that we have right here. For I bar of 1, it's going to be 1.5 inches times a height of 12 inches cubed divided by 12. And that value is 216 inches to the fourth. I2, again, we're going to use these values, will be 10 inches times one inch cubed divided by 12 is equal to 0 0.833. And we'll put these values right here. So it's gonna be 216.833. We can leave that blank. 
In fact, we'll leave these next two blink and we'll make our last summation right over here. Now, we need to determine these, uh, this column, which is dy. Now, dy is the distance between, again, our centroid of our section and the centroid of our segment. So in this case here, we have 8.32 for segment one, we have 8.32 is this height, this height is six, so this height would be 2.32, 2.32. For the next segment uh, between 8.32 and 12.5, we can go, well, let's go dy2, it's 12.5 inches minus 8.32 inches, and that gives us a value of 4.18 inches. And so that'll be right here. Now, our, la our next column is just the um, product of our areas and uh, these dy squares. So here's our area, 18 and 2.32 squared. And I'm just gonna fill this in. Our first value here will be 96.9. The next one will be 174.7. Then our final column, we're gonna sum our i bars plus our a dy squareds. And so 216 plus 96.9 is 312.9. And then we have 0.833 plus 174.7, and that's 175.5. And then we sum these two, so we have our sum, and we have a value of 488.4. That is our moment of inertia about the z-axis. 488 inches to the fourth power. So let's look at a couple other shapes. The first shape we have here is a box beam and our central location, and the Z, would be located, located right here in our center. And if our dimensions were BO for our base on the outside, HO for our height of the outside, and then HI, our height on the inside, and then finally BI would be our base on the inside, our moment of inertia about the z-axis would equal the moment of inertia of the outside shape minus the moment of inertia of the inside shape. So the moment of inertia for outside, this BOHO, then we would subtract everything from our inside. And so in this case, it simplifies to BOHO cubed divided by 12 minus BIHI cubed divided by 12. Now if you look at our I-beam, here we have again an outside portion, and what we can do is we can subtract the inside portion. So let's give this another base of BO, overall height of HO, we'll call this height on the inside HI again, and I don't know, let's call this distance S, I suppose. And so our moment of inertia about the z-axis, of course that's right here in the middle, is equal to B O H O cubed divided by 12 minus our S H I cubed divided by 12. And then there's two of these one, and two. And so that would be our moment of inertia for our I-beam. For this H-beam, 
we have basically three rectangles and each of these rectangles lie or have a centroid that lies on the axis um, of our H-beam and that's the case actually with all of these other shapes too. Notice that the inside and the outside shapes all lie on the same z-axis and that's how we can do these simple tricks. So let's just call this 1, call this 2, call this 3 and so the moment of inertia about the z-axis in this case would be I1 plus I2 plus I3 and of course each of these I's would just be BH cubed over 12. And that's how we can simplify this. The last topic we'll investigate is the section modulus or the section moduli if you're looking at more than one. And basically since our maximum stresses occur either the top surface or the bottom surface of our beams, we use what's called the section modulus to help calculate uh, the stresses. And so the uh, maximum stresses uh, is equal to the bending moment divided by the section modulus, where the section modulus S is equal to I divided by C. And C is either the distance between the centroid and the bottom surface or the centroid and the top surface. S bottom is the section modulus, uh, which is the ratio of the moment of inertia to the distance between the centroid and the bottom. So in this case, C bottom is equal to uh, 0.8322, is, which is the distance we found earlier of the uh, location of our centroid. And so IZ was 488.4 inches to the fourth. And then C bottom is 8.32 inches. And so our S bottom, if I can find it on my paper, is 58.7 inches cubed. And so we would use that to determine the stress at the bottom surface of our section. Realize that we no longer have the negative sign uh, in our equation where we have now M divided by S bottom. And so we have to pay attention to whether or not we uh, have a compressive stress or a tensile stress. And with many materials, it doesn't matter. Uh, but if it does, you'd want to pay attention to that. For the uh, section modulus to the top, that was just the moment of inertia about the z-axis. Uh, and then c-top is this distance right here, which is c-top is equal to 13 inches, which is our entire height, uh, subtracted by our distance that we've got here, minus 8.32 inches. And that value is 4.68 inches. So our section modulus of the top portion, S top, is equal to 488.4 inches cubed, I'm sorry, inches to the fourth power, divided by 4.68 inches, and that is equal to 104.3 inches cubed. Thank you for watching.